Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship in Brooklyn, New York. And it's time for today's daily devotion. And our daily devotion series is where we read a chapter from the Bible together. We post these videos five days a week. Of course, you can access them at any time. But our encouragement is that as often as you can, I think five days a week is a great goal, uh, that you include some time in God's Word in your day. And uh, these videos are designed to help with that. Uh, not to replace more conventional reading, but to supplement, support, uh, to prime the pump a little bit, as it were. In this series of videos, we're reading the Gospel of John. And today we're reading John chapter 10. I'm just turning there now. And uh, we're at about the halfway point through John's Gospel, here in chapter 10, and uh, in this chapter, we're going to read about Jesus, who is likened to a good shepherd. We're going to see Jesus once again claim to be the Son of God, to the chagrin of all the religious leaders in, uh, in the area. And those are the only two subsections in this chapter. Uh, John chapter 10 is 42 verses, so about average length. So let's read it now together. John chapter 10 begins this way in verse 1. I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep, and the gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They'll run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I tell you the truth, I'm the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They'll come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. I'm the good shepherd. A good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He'll abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for money and doesn't really care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me just as my father knows me and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in the sheepfold and I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. The father loves me because I sacrifice my life so that I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily, for I have the authority to lay it down when I want to and to take it up again. For this is what my Father has commanded. And when he said these things, the people were again divided in their opinions about him. And some said, he's demon-possessed. He's out of his mind. Why listen to a man like that? Others said, this doesn't sound like a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? It was now winter, and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. He was in the temple, walking through the section known as Solomon's Colonnade, and the people surrounded him and asked, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I've already told you, and you don't believe me. The proof is in the work I do in my Father's name, but you don't believe me because you're not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me, and He's more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Once again, the people picked up stones to kill Him, and Jesus said, At my Father's direction, I've done many good works. For which are you going to stone me? They replied, We're stoning you not for any good work, but for blasphemy. You, a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus replied, It is written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say, you are gods. 
And you know that the Scriptures cannot be altered. So if those people who received God's message were called, quote, gods, why do you call it blasphemy when I say, I am the Son of God? After all, the Father sent me apart. He set me apart and sent me into the world. Don't believe me unless I carry out my Father's work. But if I do His work, believe in the evidence of the miraculous works I've done. Even if you don't believe me, then you'll know and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Once again, they tried to arrest him, but he got away from them and left them. He went beyond the Jordan River to the place where John was first baptizing and stayed there a while, and many followed him. John didn't perform miraculous signs, they remarked to one another, but everything he said about this man has come true. And many who were there believed in Jesus. That concludes John chapter 10. I uh, hope this... Uh, daily devotion, this chapter of Scripture from the Gospel of John has blessed you. We're blessed uh, by your participation. If you think it might bless some others, please feel free to share this. We just want to make God's Word as available as we can to as many people as we can. I hope you'll join us again next time for John chapter 11. God bless you.